What is up, you guys? Welcome back to Title Gardens. This video is all about water flow in your reef aquarium. Water flow is arguably one of the most important aspects of a healthy reef aquarium. Good water circulation brings nutrients to your corals. It sweeps pollutants away. Overall, very important stuff. However, figuring out what even is good water flow and how to go about recommending water flow, that is a big challenge. So what's the problem? The main problem is, as important as good water circulation is, the recommendations tend to gravitate towards gross oversimplification. So for example, here at Tidal Gardens, a lot of our coral-specific tips, you know, we'll say like, low, medium, high type recommendations. And those are kind of decent guidelines at best. At worst, they are completely unhelpful oversimplifications. Perhaps the single biggest problem with water flow is that there's no real good way to measure it. In the past, on forums, a lot of the discussion around flow would be some kind of calculation of like tank turnover. So you would add up all your flow rates from your pumps, power heads, return pump, all that stuff. And you would compare that to your overall tank volume and kind of get like an idea of the tank turnover. And that can be kind of generalized to a low, medium, high type convention and see if that matches up with the corals you're trying to keep. Better than nothing, I suppose, but there's no real way for a hobbyist to measure the actual flow rate near and around certain corals. It's not like there's a test kit out there for water chemistry. There isn't a nifty handy PAR meter like for lighting. There are somewhat inexpensive flow meters that you can install in line with plumbing. The problem there is you're not really interested in the flow rate going through pipes. You're interested in the flow rate in and around your colonies. And that's where you're screwed because they do make devices like this. They tend to be professional. They tend to be research grade, meant for like environmental studies. And whenever you find one of these devices, they're actually difficult to even source. But when you do find them, it's like sitting down at a restaurant and everything on the menu says market. You're kind of screwed. These devices, every single time, it is request for quote because they are not catering towards retail customers. It's like you better have grant funding backing you if you're really interested in one of these things. The best advice that I have for you when trying to get an idea of the type of flow that's in your aquarium is all observation-based. And it's kind of training your eyes to see what good flow looks like. What I like to do is to take like a turkey baster full of air and you blow air into the intake of a pump, whether that be a power head or your return pump or something. Your pumps will chop up all those bubbles, make micro bubbles and send it throughout your tank. And at that point, you can really get an idea of how that water is moving there, how the different pump flows, they interact with one another, and the effect of your aquascape and the coral colonies. The first time you see it, it's not gonna mean a whole heck of a lot because there's not a lot of data points, really. It's, it's your tank. But, you know, go to other people's aquariums. Go see if you can <laughs> do the same sort of test on their tank. It'll blow some bubbles into a pump or, the other way is for feeding, right? You feed something cloudy and it's not quite as good, but if you put something cloudy in the water, you can kind of see how that cloudy supernate would behave similar to bubbles. Not quite as good, but similar. Just get an idea of what that looks like. Look at how their corals look. For instance, we've got some Ganiopora here and depending on which tank that they're in, they look dramatically different. So we have like a, a type of a microgani, sometimes they're called Bernard Poras, 
And in certain tanks, they are very, very, very short tentacled, very tight against the skeleton. In other tanks, they look practically like full-fledged regular Ghanis. There's no difference in water chemistry. They're in the same system. The big difference, water flow. Just kind of getting a lot more experience looking at these things, looking again at like the, let's call it the bubble profile of the tank. All that stuff is super hyper valuable. And if you wanted to really geek out, record video because memory plays weird tricks. And so being able to refer back to what that bubble profile looked like can be super duper helpful, especially when, as we'll get to later, your tank is a dynamic thing. There's a lot of factors that are constantly changing. And you might think that, oh yeah, the water flow always was like that. Over time, the water flow never stays the same. Okay, changing gears just a little bit. The reason why I'm harping so much on the observational part of it is because water flow by its very nature has so many variables that impact it. Rather than trying to parse out all those details, it's better just to see what the final result is and evaluate that. I'll give you an idea of some of these variables and how they interplay. Let's say you have a tank with a return pump and just two power hits, something very basic. You could just have it all laminar flow. And each of these power heads are gonna give you just a consistent static flow. That is one implementation. You can also, these days with a lot of the DC pump options, have a lot of programmed variable flow. And so with those same two power heads, it would be possible to have them face one another and have them on like a reverse sync. So when one is at its most intense, the other one is, is at its weakest. And you slowly transition back and forth. And so where those two streams collide, you basically have this, this like chaos tornado going on. And that tornado will kind of just move back and forth across your tank. Again, same equipment, incredibly different flow profiles, right? Talking about water flow with regard to your gear in regard to placement sometimes isn't as helpful as just pumping it full of bubbles and looking at it. Being able to just observe these flow patterns is gonna be much more valuable to you. Second example of how sometimes the low, medium, high construct doesn't help very much. There are certain corals that just don't like getting hit by direct flow. And so we would recommend low to medium flow. But that's not to say that you can't have screamingly powerful flow in your tank. How do you accomplish that? This is one of those factors that is a luxury in larger, deeper tanks. As long as that flow is not directly hitting that coral, you're probably gonna be pretty good. So you could have this ripping current go right above that coral, and it's not gonna react poorly. It's really just when it's directly impacting the flesh, that's a problem. And I've seen a lot of tanks where because of the depth of the aquarium, they're able to have crazy stuff going on at the surface and not have it strip the flesh off of the corals that are actually mounted to the aquascape. One last thing I will leave you with, with regards to water flow. It is a dynamic process and you're never really done designing the flow in your aquarium because your success today is the seeds of tomorrow's failure. What do I mean by that? If you are doing everything right, your colonies are going to grow. And as they grow, they're going to impact the water flow in your tank quite dramatically. And the best example of this is in fast growing SPS tanks. Things like Acropora-dominated tanks. Heck, even uh, some of the more easier to keep stuff, let's say like Styloforas and Plating Montes and stuff like that, just fast growing. What tends to happen is you design like the perfect water flow going on. You get your, your moving tornado of goodness going around your tank and everything like that. It's a work of art as far as like hydrodynamics goes. Once those colonies take off though, what tends to happen is 
the flow at the center of these colonies gets suffocated. If you've ever seen like an acro colony just collapse, oftentimes it'll start off with like a little dead spot, like right in the middle or right at the base perhaps. And all of a sudden the entire thing just goes white. Much of that can be attributed to flow. Over time, this coral created its own dead spot and quickly succumbed to a bacterial infection. So that's where that bubble audit will help out tremendously. Because as fast as these corals grow, you can kind of see where pockets of low flow are starting to accumulate. And at that point, you really do want to design around that, make sure to add perhaps a second power head, perhaps change the angles of your existing power heads, things of that sort. All right, guys, that pretty much does it for this video. I wanted to kind of touch on some of the nuance involved in water flow because it is so easy to oversimplify the recommendations and there really is a lot that kind of goes into that. But hopefully as you guys get more experience looking at water flow patterns, it will be easier and easier in the future to kind of gauge what kind of water flow is the most appropriate for your corals. All right, guys, that does it from here. Happy reefing.